All right, so hello everyone and welcome to RBCM at Home Kids, uh, a play date across screens, uh, on screens across uh, British Columbia and the world. Uh, my name is Chris O'Connor and I'm a learning program developer here at the museum. And like I said, we've been doing these RBCM at Home uh, Kids sessions since March of 2020. Um, and uh, it's been something that's been really lovely and um, I, I love doing it and we were doing it once a, a week. Now we're doing a little less than one, a little less than once a week. Um, and, and then one, and so some of the, the guests, endearing guests, lovely guests that would uh, visit uh, weekly, would take part weekly was Karina Miller and uh, students from Karina Miller's class. So I wanted to just read, just to set the stage for what we're talking about. So last year, Victoria's school district offered remote learning uh, to students uh, of Im immune compromised families. The classes were made up of children from across the district. Uh, this is Victoria's school district 61, who came together every day on Zoom for learning. Division 91, yay, Division 91, uh, was one of those classes with 19 students uh, in grades three and four. Almost all were facing challenges at home and found it difficult being away from the usual school. They created a community unlike any other. They became friends, laughed together and learned and despite never meeting one another in person. A highlight of, uh, so this is uh, Karina's words. So a highlight uh, of their school week was often attending RBCM at Home Kids where uh, they met and learned from artists, poets, educators, and museum curators from around the province. One Wednesday we met with, uh, so that one Wednesday we had a session with Laura Minta Holland uh, who taught uh, everyone how to make origami creams. And, um, and with the challenge of making 1000 creams. Uh, origami can be calming practice, which uh, we link to bear, the Lekwungen speaking peoples of spirit of alliance animal that reminds, uh, reminds the, reminded the class of care for uh, oneself or care for each other. Um, as a class, the students decided they would like to fold a thousand cranes as a way to find calm and a wish for peace, health and safety for the wider community. Um, it took a year, but here we are. Um, and, uh, and what we're doing at the museum today is, is, sh is showing those off. We're showing the 1,000 cranes that they created. Um, and we're so happy to um, be joined by, oh, and actually one of the, the uh, Alita on the, in the chat of Zoom said uh, her wish is uh, a robust health. So, so um, today we're really, uh, honored really to, to be joined by Karina, the educator of this class, and then some of the students from, from that class as well, in the museum, in the gallery, in the Becoming BC gallery, in the train station. So hello and welcome Karina and everyone. Oh, it's really exciting to be here. We were just saying we used to come every Wednesday and it's strange to be on the other side of the camera now. So um, we are up in the train station. I'm gonna turn my camera around so I can show you a little bit. So we created, we folded a thousand cranes and they're all hung up inside the train station. And actually there's so many of them that some of them are outside the train station. Um, and I am so excited because I have some of my students from last year here. Um, and I didn't get to meet most of them until the last day of school. Um, and so I have Oliver here. Can you say hello, Oliver? Hello. And I have Jazzy. And I have another Oliver. And where has Chloe oh, gone? Oh, she just went up to Grand Hotel. Oh, and Chloe has gone to the hotel, but she will be back. Um, <laughs> they're very excited to be in a museum. Here comes the train. Um, So often one of the, the, the favorite places uh, within the gallery is the train station. And, and one of those reasons is because of this train that passes by. Um, so our, our cranes are made from so many different things. Um, 
So I kept a couple of them out that I just to show you. Um, so some of them were made from, not everybody had origami paper at home. So I have some that are made from, um, oh, there's one that was here, but it's so long now. Some are made from school paper, like their line paper that they wrote with. I have this teeny, can you see it? Teeny, tiny little one, someone made from photocopy paper. Um, I really like this one that Will made. It has feet. <laughs> so they're all really unusual. And then I have one that Spencer made that is just really huge. <laughs> so we were getting all kinds of cranes because people had different things at home that they could use and they were very industrious in finding different things to use to make their cranes. Um, and so a lot of people had their families help make them. We have some family members here. So Jazzy has her brother, let me turn the camera off, break my finger there. Um, has her mom, Anya, and her brother, Jack, here. Hello. <laughs> and we also have uh, Chloe and Oliver's mom are, is here. Um, and so a lot of the students' families helped make the cranes, which was really cool because they got the whole community involved. Um, Chloe and Oliver's grandma helped make a lot of these cranes as well. So um, I was amazed today when we were hanging them up to see how many there really are. <laughs> like. You don't really think about how many a thousand cranes are until you start doing it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so the kids today, the, these kids haven't actually met each other before either, other than on Zoom. Um, so it's kind of neat for them to be able to meet each other. Um, just turning my camera around again, sorry. Ah. Okay, so as much as I use technology every day last year, I still <laughs> feel like not that good with this, it. This is not a test. This is not a test for you, Karina. <laughs> it feels a little bit like one. Um, so Karina, so yeah. do, you, do you mind um, just telling us a little bit about what do, what do you remember about learning about the cranes and what, what is the significant of, significance of cranes and why why was that an important process for you as a class to, to um, take that on a, as a challenge? As a class, um, all of these kids were at home for different various reasons, but because they couldn't go to school. And so um, what amazed me most about this remote class was that uh, the kids became a community. They became a class. They became friends with each other. They were in breakout rooms and would chat together. They um, did, I don't know, they became like a true community. And I didn't expect that to happen. And they also, sh they had a, a common experience of not being able to go to school. Um, and so they all had the wish that they could and the wish that things would be safer and better. And so the cranes gave us a chance to sort of put that intention out there. Um, we also learned about the spirit of alliance. We were looking at that and the bear uh, reminds us to take care of ourself and, and folding cranes is a way of meditation, a way of calming yourself. The first time you do one, it doesn't feel like that at all because it's so frustrating. You kind of just want to scrunch it up. <laughs> but once you get into the rhythm of it, it can be very calming. So we looked at the, the folding cranes as, as something to help ourselves and also a way to help the community. Um, so yeah, and it took all year. I was still getting deliveries of cranes in the summer. Um, and finally we reached a thousand, which is a very exciting day. Um, and so here they are. Um, maybe I it's, could ask it's you interesting. guys a little bit. It's, I was just gonna say last, our last RBCM at home kids session was with uh, Incia Darcy uh, from the Lower Mainland who during the pandemic, she's, she's a student as well, but she created uh, these color, she would color and paint rocks with oh. the, the statements from Bonnie Henry. Uh, and it was a calming a calming practice as well. It just made me think of like the, the difference between and the similarities between painting rocks and uh, making cranes as a med meditative calming practice. So um, so you you said you were gonna turn the camera around and- Yeah, I'm just, the train's going by. Sorry, every time I do this, there must be a way to do it where I don't stick my finger in the screen. Oh, that's, but that's okay. I kind of know how. Um, so yeah, I was going to ask um, these guys what they remember about um, online learning or what they remember about the class. Um, what sort of sticks in your head, Chloe? What sort of, what, when you think of remote learning, what do you think of, like what, what comes to mind? Uh, my friends. Your friends? Yeah. And what did you find more difficult about it than the usual school? Uh, that sometimes you forget to mute or unmute, and sometimes you hear things that 
sometimes you don't want to. <laughs> yes, that's very true. Um, and what did you enjoy about it? Is there anything that you enjoyed? Yeah. Uh, and my awesome. Um, anybody else want? I don't want to put people on the spot here, but is it Oliver? Can I ask you? What do you? Is there anything that sticks out to you about remote learning? It was much better going to school. It was much what? Better in school because you didn't have to walk to school. You didn't have to walk to school. This is true. You just woke up and you were there. And some of the kids would just stay in their pajamas. It was pajama day every day for some kids. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Pajama day for every day. Pajama day for every day, for sure. Jazzy, do you remember anything in particular? Shy at first. Yeah, you were shy at first, weren't you? And Jazzy really like by the end she was like very like shared all the time and and it was a, a and a different sort of format to be able to learn and to be able to sort of be more brave, right? Eh? Yeah. It cool. was an amazing way for her to become braver for the next year. Yeah. It was like really easing her into the next grade, which was yeah. and when by the time you got to the next grade, you weren't shy at all. Are you shy at school now? Um, a, little. a little as much yeah. as you were before? No, the first time I met Jazzy, she was really shy. She didn't, she didn't come out. <laughs> I didn't see her. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. um, I, I feel very shy even here at this museum too. So I like, um, I, I understand Jazzy, but feeling shy. Yeah, um, I was very shy. I'm wondering one. actually from a parent perspective, what was that like last year for um, doing remote learning as from a parent's perspective? Oh, as a parent, I was so appreciative of the every, I, I didn't even know such a thing was possible. And because I, I was going through some serious illness um, and then COVID, I think the illness would have been bad enough, but Jazzy would have still been able to go to school. But uh, then because COVID made it kind of uh, important yeah. that I didn't get exposed to anything. Um, but I don't know who it was or why, but I said that this was my case right now. And she said, oh, uh, I, th I think the principal of, of uh, Jazzy's old school or current school said there's a thing that you can do and you wouldn't and she wouldn't have to miss out. So it was a, 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 a real godsend, I would say, that we got Jazzy to still be able to feel like a part of a community, which Ms. Miller was so wonderful at making and instantly when we had that first meeting Karina I remember thinking okay this is going to be good it's going to be fine <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> thank you it, it was the parent involvement was so important um yeah. for the kids success it was much different than at school so the parents actually helped write the report cards too because they were there oh, yeah. seeing the kids so yeah, yeah. it was a very different experience for all of us yeah right so even out of these challenges like there's in really good opportunities to, to like ideally to, in a learning environment it's kids and parents and educators working together right so yeah like yeah for sure some it real was, opportunity um, with, with that it was some some really cool things such as these cranes came out of uh -huh. it right yeah. so, so um it, it was uh it was something new. We all learned so much from it, I think. I learned so much as an educator as well. So um, yeah, it was a challenging experience, but I wouldn't change it for anything. Like it was uh -huh. actually really worthwhile as well. Great. Here comes the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're listening for it, it seems like it comes more often, right? So Karina, how was that for you as an educator? How did the, you said it, you learned some things um, that um, I definitely became, you wouldn't know it from what I'm doing right now, but I definitely came better with technology. <laughs> um, it also, it was just a different way of um, planning. Uh, you can't just say, hey, yeah, let's do some silent reading or let's all go outside for 10 minutes. Like you had to have everything very prescribed. Um, and also I, I'm a very hands-on teacher. And so trying to do that um, through Zoom was difficult yeah. sometimes. We did do some experiments and I still tried to provide lots of art and things like that, but it was uh, uh, different. It was, it made me have to think really creatively about how I was going to offer those kinds of things. So, for sure. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, I always loved whenever we did something hands on and your students would uh, send it, or you would send in through your students uh, some of the things that they did and shared. Um, 
I especially like I remember the monsters uh, from a couple <laughs> Halloweens ago. Um, yeah, that were amazing. I think that was so, the first workshop we did actually, or one oh, of the yeah. first workshops we did. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still have mine. Oh good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So, again, you it was around a year ago you saw a session, or uh, nearly a year ago that you saw a session with. Laura Vinta Holland, who's an artist out of uh, Vancouver, the Vancouver area. Um, and then you learned how to make these, these cranes. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like to, sh to share, or would you, the students like to share how to make them? And maybe if people are watching at home, that might inspire them to, to make their own as well. Yes, I have Chloe actually, she's disappearing over here, but Chloe is a, <laughs> is very uh, good at making the cranes. She made a lot of these ones and so did her brother Oliver. And um, she has agreed to try and show us how to do it. So if I hold this, she can maybe there's a table outside that might be a bit uh, easier. Um, it is, we did discover when we did the program, it's really difficult to learn how to do it um, with like on the screen. Yeah, um, So sure. she'll go really slowly and uh -huh. maybe she could, if any of the rest of you want to try and do it with her, you should try if you like. Um, Jazzy, do you want to try and make another one? She's like, no, I've had enough calm for one day. <laughs> okay, so Chloe, so where do we start? So if you have colored paper, Chloe, and it's only colored on one side, should the color be on the down or up? Down. Down, okay, so if your paper, you can use anything. So I was saying like my students use photocopy paper, anything cut into a shape of a square. So you just need to start with a square and it can be like anything, newspaper, wrapping paper, um, anything you happen to have at home. So she's folding it in half. Uh, up, like rectangle. Uh, Chris, can you hear and Chloe? It, yeah, a little bit. You might need to uh, just repeat closer. something. But Chloe, uh, I, love the, I love how precise you are with the, the folding of it. Really? Yeah. And, and the making the creases really strong is important, right, Chloe? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you really bend it down and maybe even run it between your fingernails kind of to get it really creased. And now she's folding it again in half. So she's got a square and she's really folding the creases down. And then you unfold it and make it into a large triangle. I fold it in the bottom corner and have it shaped like um, uh, more of a star kind of thing. So it looks like you did two folds to begin with and make those squares for the yeah, creases, and, she, and now you're now you're doing a uh, triagonal right. fold. Yeah. Yeah. So she did. She made the squares and she unfolded it, and now she's holding it into a triangle. Mm hmm. Thank you for going nice and slowly, Chloe. Yeah, for sure. You're welcome. <laughs> and I see all that, like the pressing down to really make those creases. So it seems like that's really important. Yeah. And then she's folded it into another smaller triangle. So she took the big triangle. Can you just open up your big triangle again and show them? Yeah. And then she folded that in half to make a, a smaller triangle. Great. Now she's unfolding it all again. So now you're thinking, why did I do that? I'm just unfolding it, but it's actually really important. <laughs> Chloe, do you mind holding the paper up so we can see the creases? Can you hold it close to the camera? Yeah, so you almost have, looks like a snowflake. Yeah, or like a star or something, yeah. Yeah. So this part's a little bit hard. Um, these two folds, um, you're going to put these two corners the ones with lines like here and fold them to this point. So she's ah. taking the one on the side and folding it down to the bottom. Ah, right. And then she's going to do the same on the other side. Everything you do on one side, you do on the other side. To make things symmetrical or ah. not mirrored. Okay, Chloe, can I get you to open it and do that one more time? Just to show them one more time. So this part, it is a little tricky. So she's taking the one corner and taking it down to the bottom. And then, and then you open it up. And then she's taking the other corner 
and putting it down to the bottom. And it really helps with all the creases to make it yeah. fold really nicely. And then you flatten the top down. So it looks like it, now it's a, a square or diamond. Also looks a little like a beak. It does look very much like a beak, especially because it's yellow paper. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so there should be a flappy side that kind of looks like this on the bottom. Yeah. Nice. And on the top, it should be pointy. Oh, okay. So the top part is pointy and the bottom's got that flappy bit. So it's, def it's important that you've got the flappy bit facing the bottom of your table, like As a diamond. Otherwise, it won't be able to go to the other steps to make the ring. So um, we take this one side and fold it to the middle to make like a narrow type of ring. And if you're doing the same with the other. So it's just the one, the, the top level. So on the back, there's still a square. So making those smaller triangles. Yeah. yeah. Chloe, do you mind holding that up again, just to the camera, once you're done that fold? Oh, yeah. Got it. So it kind of looks like a kite. Yeah, that's side. what I was going to say. It looks like a kite now. So these bits are just, it's just folded in. And then yeah. surprise, surprise, she's gonna turn it over and do the same <laughs> thing on the other side. There does seem to be a, a repetition, a, a fair yeah. amount of repetition and, and symmetry on same on one side of the other. Mm -hmm. And it becomes very repetitive when you make a thousand. Yeah, I remember right? <laughs> when we came to the workshop, the woman had made a thousand cranes twice. So she oh, yeah. had folded just herself 2,000 cranes, which really amazed me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, both sides should be tight and there should be uh, no extras. Oh, yeah. So this is top triangle, um, and you fold it down. To make a line for the other side. So when you open it, there should be a line there. It's kind of hard to see because it's very thick here. Um, and you do it on the other side. So two lines on both sides. Now you would fold it to make that same shape once again. Okay, this is another hard, hard part. Um, okay, uh, Chloe, just hang on to the train this way because this is the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's okay. Yeah. Okay, okay you can hear okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So you put this up. The reason why I folded the triangle down is so that it can prevent it from folding up all the way. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad you're doing this and not me, because yours is so much <laughs> more accurate <laughs> when I do it. There are these lines here. So, so you this part, it kind of looks like a, you're making like a, it almost looks like a boat, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is the sort of tricky part. So you're opening it up. So uh, if you want to have it easier, you can fold these lines in first, the ones on the bottom. And then the ones on the top and make it flat. It's fine if it just goes up like that. Because um, it's and like kind if of it isn't connected. perfect, will it be okay, Chloe? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because mine weren't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now it looks like this. Can you hold that a little yeah, bit up? Yeah, totally. Light? Starting so to see like, a little bit of the crane up yeah. here. And so then you're going to turn it over and do that same thing on the other side. Chloe, when you make these just on your own, how long does it take you to make a crane? 
Um, I'm not sure. Maybe a minute or maybe two. Maybe a minute. Yeah, a lot faster than this thing. And Chloe, how many cranes do you think that you yourself made? I don't know. Oh, I think 30. you made more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I remember getting a big bag at Christmas from your house that was full of cranes, and I think there was over a hundred in there. Oh yeah. Hundred and fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. As a family, they made them, and I think they sent there were a hundred and fifty or close to two hundred of them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so now we've got these two triangles. Sort of thing, and when you open it. This would be the back of the crane. Uh huh. And these would uh, almost be the wings. So, um, what you do is take this. Okay, so first, can we see which side we have pointed down and which side we have pointed up? So, there's this there's, another floppy side. So, the ones with the legs kind of goes down. Yeah. Yeah. And then this kind of wing bit. So, uh, to the top. Okay. So, you take this and fold it to the middle and not all the way. You can see these shapes, like triangle-ish. And the other side. It is really impressive how precise you're being, Chloe. Like it's very, I know, right? So... <laughs> and the other side. Okay. I imagine after doing even 30 of them that you like, you learn really quickly how to do it and you don't even have to think about it too much. Huh? Yeah, the first couple are really challenging and yeah. then you kind of just get into a flow with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, and it's I nice do love the do. other, lot, the many different colors too. It sort of creates different personalities for the cream. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Karina, what were you going to say? I was going to say it's sort of instantly gratifying too, because you make them and you can see them all sitting there, the ones you've made, like it's, um, yeah. and they look so, it, I don't know, it, it's a, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, right. Those kind of look like walking legs. Chloe, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we've got the legs so at the bottom, right? So you folded them in. Yeah. So there are the uh, neck and the tail. Basically, for me, the easiest way is to fold it in like this. So if you take that the two sides and stuff them and fold them together. Basically, the reverse side. Hmm. And there are lines here. So that's where you're gonna fold it this up. It doesn't really matter which side the neck and the um, tail are supposed to be. If it's not really perfect, it's fine. Okay. It looks pretty perfect to me. Chloe. Yeah, I know I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely perfection. <laughs> but it's it's nice that you said that, Chloe. That if if someone is making it at home, it's okay. Like, because I I would definitely not be able to make it perfect like that. Well, and and of ours, when you if you're here and you come and see yeah. them, you'll see that there's like people make them a little differently too. There's lots of different uh, versions of it, and everyone's yeah. you know got their own take on it, and they they all look like they're and no two birds are alike. So why would they all look? Yeah, alike? totally. <laughs> so this bit. You just fold it in to make, to make kind it of like really narrow. You kind of squeeze it together, right? Yeah. And is that the tail you're making or the head? Uh, I guess it will be the head. The head. And then you pull it out. Once that bit has touched the edge of the wing, you fold it. If you're feeling a little restraint, you can open it up again to see if it a bit has folded in. If you can, you can just undo it and fix the problem, mm. sort of. I don't. I like your problem-solving tactics. Though. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And you can do the same on the other side. And, and Chris, this is recorded, right? So if people wanted to, they could just watch yeah, this video. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you can, people can watch back and, and pause. 
and re rewind <laughs> many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess this would be the head since it's kind of uh, wonky ish, and this would be the tail. <laughs> now, this bit would be flat. Oh, I gotta guess so I can. The middle. You fold it down like that. And then once it's kind of diagonal, diagonal, uh -huh. um, and then you squeeze it again until it becomes a head. If it doesn't fall all the way, it's fine. It's just supposed to be like that. Yeah. Kind of. Doesn't matter which side. You can just flip them. So then. Now you can do the wings. You fold it down until there are like lines here and there for me. Or until like a bit of the triangle is visible. And yeah. Beautiful, Chloe. Yeah, so lovely. Like that. Look at that. <laughs> Wow. You made it look so easy as well. <laughs> That's amazing. Can you bring it closer to the camera? And can you have it fly around the museum? <laughs> we have some instructions out here. And people that have been visiting have been making, we've been watching people making cranes and leaving yeah. them in a the sleep place um, wow. and making a wish for something they'd like to make a wish for. Um, so we also have some attempts that maybe didn't go quite as planned, but that's okay. <laughs> yes. Speaking speaking of not perfection. <laughs> yeah, which is all good too. Yeah, it's all um, good. So thank you, Chloe, for showing us how to do that. Yeah, thank you so much, Chloe. You're welcome. Are you trying there, Oliver? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so maybe, um, um, Karina, if you want to do one last tour of all the 1,000 cranes, they started to fly out into the space, into the Old Town section. But most of the 1,000 cranes are actually in the train station, ready, ready to travel <laughs> to far off parts of the world through using the train. Or they could just fly. And it is really amazing to see that many. And just thinking about, thinking of Chloe making that one and now looking at all 1,000 uh, yeah. is, is pretty incredible. It is actually. <laughs> um, so each, it one, is each very one of these. Is, that they did this. Yeah. Um, just to end the session, I, I just wanted to show uh, Chloe's brother. Um, Oliver uh, made a little video. So we're just going to share that just uh, right now. Um, right. Hello, my name is Oliver. My online school experience. One thing that I dislike about online school is that you do not get to see your friends physically. I enjoyed online school because I met some new people, including one person from my old school. Even though there was a lot of work, it was still very enjoyable. I loved participating in these meetings because I learned new things and made new friends. My favorite project was the 1000 Crane Challenge. I, the reason I liked the challenge was because origami is entertaining to me. I learned to fold them one by one with dedication. Thank you, Ms. Miller, for setting up these workshop meetings. I love the meetings, especially the tour around the museum. Hello, my oh. name is Oliver. <laughs> my online school experience. One oh, <laughs> it started to, sorry, started to do the, it again. All right, well, thank you, Oliver. Um, and, uh, and thank you, Karina, for, um, for, being such a good educator throughout the, the year and uh, with the students. Uh, thanks to all your, your students there and, and to all the parents as well and all the grown-ups that help support the, the online learning as well. Yeah, do you want to get into one group shot? Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining in.